This device could someday help generate enough energy to power entire cities. But how? Through wave energy, that's how. Yeah, like ocean waves. Trust me, they're strong. This device, called the X-Wave, helps turn the motion of waves into electricity we could use at home. This solution is called wave energy. Wave energy is considered to be hydroelectric energy, which alternates with solar and wind as the world's largest source of renewable energy. But it's also the energy source with the most untapped potential. Because it's estimated that wave energy has the potential to produce between 20,000 and 80,000 terawatt hours per year. The world's current energy consumption is around 20,000 terawatt hours per year. It means wave energy can power the entire planet. So I want to know, how does this work? How soon can we scale it up across the world? Better yet, how soon can I power my own home with wave energy? Let's find out. On today's episode of Can It Save the Planet, we're breaking down wave energy, its benefits, its challenges, and its bright future. I'm in San Diego to talk to CalWave, a company dedicated to unlocking the power of the ocean and dive deep into wave energy. Ocean wave power can really provide the last 30% of clean energy to get us to 100% renewable power. And ultimately find out if ocean waves can save the planet. Presented by Northwest River Partners. You might not have heard much about wave energy because solar and wind are the two sources of renewable energy that get the most attention. However, there are two obvious problems with wind and solar. The sun doesn't always shine and the wind doesn't always blow. In a perfect world, solar and wind could meet about 60 to 70% of the energy demand we need. So we need to turn to the ocean, which is always active with tides, causing an abundance of waves 24-7, 365, to fill the remaining 30% and get to 100%. Wave energy is basically harnessing the motion of those waves, small or big, and turning that kinetic energy into carbon-free electricity. But how do you capture an entire ocean's movement? I struggled catching a tiny wave earlier. Well, there are a few concepts, but one of them is by submerging generators like this one into the ocean. Looking at the X-Wave is truly impressive. I mean, I'm standing in front of a giant cube that could power entire communities. To learn more, I'm talking to Marcus Lehman, the CEO of CalWave, who has been doing research on wave energy for over a decade. Can you start by telling us what the X-1 is and how does it work? So it's a wave energy converter device. It produces clean electricity from ocean waves. Wave energy converter, similar to a wind turbine, uses a renewable resource, produces electricity. Overall, the structure looks different because it's a buoy, it floats. We're underwater, so you can't see it. That's actually one big advantage compared to offshore wind is that we can be closer to shore, we can be at communities where visual impact and tourism is a big concern. But in general, the moving parts, how we produce power is very similar to a wind turbine. So it's rotating systems that then drive a generator and produce electricity. And then inside, it's really like an electric car. So as it moves, we brake, essentially, it's like an electric car going downhill and we're braking it to slow it down and that produces the electricity. And so it's really a rotary drivetrain that produces power on a generator. How much energy does it produce? Can it power a house, a city? The X1 is a representation for our megawatt system that powers about 1,000, 1,500 homes. The next step up will be the X100, 100 kilowatts, so about 100, 150 homes, and then the X800, and that's really the utility scale class where we can deploy big farms and areas similar to offshore wind. That number is per device, by the way. And when that X800 device Marcus mentioned is launched, they will make up farms that can provide electricity to 15 million households. So let's take a wind farm. First, if you want to build an offshore wind farm, you need the area, so you got to lease that. And then you need the environmental permits. Then you have to anchor it, and you have to bring the cable back to shore. So you need a substation that collects all the energy from many turbines. And then you have one big cable that brings the power back to the grid. And so for us, it's exactly identical. Same land, same permits, same electrical infrastructure and we're currently investigating if we can even use this existing electrical infrastructure that would double up the performance essentially of the total combined farm and reduce the cost significantly. CalWave is currently working with the Department of Energy as well as a nonprofit called PacWave to install their first wave energy farm off the coast of Oregon. Once in place, they'll be able to start providing electricity to the mainland grid. Oregon is about a 20 megawatt farm, so we can have 21 megawatt devices, and so that would be then about yeah, 20,000 homes. Wow. Marcus says that CalWave is in a good place to move forward with commercial production. 
We're working and even demonstrating it, co-locating with wind. So New York just sold off several leases for offshore wind farms and we're in touch with a couple developers to exactly do a joint demonstration with their existing infrastructure there. So we are, within the next five years, we're hoping to be on the market and really producing them um, in a similar volume as offshore wind today. Well, this truly seems like a perfect solution, but can it save the planet? Before I dive deeper into the world of wave energy, I want to take a moment to thank Northwest River Partners for sponsoring this episode. They are strong believers that our power is water. If you're committed to a sustainable life, then it's likely you recycle, shop local, think about getting an electric car, and probably feel pretty good about yourself. But answer this, do you know where your electricity comes from? Because without clean energy sources, that phone you're using right now, that future electric car, could still be fueled by coal. That's where hydropower comes in. Hydropower provides clean and sustainable energy that is reliable. Hydropower helps fill in the gaps for solar and wind power, and it's local. We don't have to rely on another region or country for it. To learn more about hydropower and its benefits, visit nwriverpartners.org. Now, back to the episode. Let's do a quick recap of what we've learned. Number one, harnessing wave energy has the potential to meet our electricity demand and help accelerate our transition away from fossil fuels. Number two, it can be scaled up like wind and solar. And number three, it's expected to start hitting the market in the next three to five years. So can wave energy save the planet? Yes. But let me be more specific. Ocean waves can create clean energy solutions that can help meet our demands. And if this means we move further away from fossil fuels, then we manage to limit global average temperatures from surpassing 1.5 degrees Celsius, which means we'll have a healthier ocean, planet, and lives overall. Now you might be asking, are there really no cons? Well, skeptics still question the impact this would have on marine life. There's also some doubt around the ability to scale this technology since it's so expensive. Oh, and its longevity. Being concerned about marine ecosystems is legitimate, but companies like CalWave and PacWave say they make sure to be mindful about their impact by looking at studies like the 2020 State of the Science report. This report identifies six areas of risk to marine life, two of which CalWave is paying close attention to, impact and noise but they have partnered with outside organizations to make sure all the acoustic measurements were acceptable and that they wouldn't hurt any marine life. Now, what about the skepticism around durability and sustainability? CalWave has demonstrated that the X-Wave works and is reliable through all kinds of weather. It survived two 10-year storms. And when it comes to the longevity of devices like the X-Wave, Marcus says they have an expected lifespan of 20 years, with some maintenance required every four to five years. But he hopes that they will be able to push that operational lifespan to 30 years with upcoming models. As for cost, well, thanks to other green energy markets, the prices to scale these devices has gone down. But as Marcus said, they still require funding to keep research and development steady. So there you have it. It is a pretty great solution to producing more carbon-free energy. And if you still have your doubts about the power of wave energy, I dare you to try Catch a Wave. Then maybe you'll understand the strength of the ocean. Let's find out. <laughs> Let's find out. We'll never find out. <laughs>